So now we're going to start talking about heredity and how genetics comes into play with um, how we end up with the traits that we have. So um, kind of scary that this is as recent a study and kind of discoveries as they are, but before the 20th century, which really to me is not that long ago, um, they used to, um, or they came up with these um, assumptions and they helped to explain the mystery of genetics. So um, the first one is constancy of species. And so that's saying that heredity can only happen within one species. There are going to be things in place that will keep other species from trying to, to send their genetic information to another species. So that's going to be contrary to the earlier belief that you could end up with something like this, right? So that's like a man and a horse. They were like, oh yeah, maybe um, if a man and a horse mated, we could form one of these. And obviously we know that that's not true. The other one is direct transmission of traits. So um, this is saying that traits are transmitted directly. There isn't like a, any mixing that's happening um, because they used to think like if someone with red hair had someone, you know, had a baby with someone with brown hair, the kid would have reddish brown hair because it would just mix. And that is not the case. It's usually one or the other. Now there's going to be exceptions to these rules. So remember when we talk about nature and stuff like that, we're just talking about in general <clears throat> um, the traits and how they work. All right, so hybridization is going to be when we cross two varieties. So that would be like if you had someone with blue eyes and you cross them with someone with brown eyes, right? That would form a hybrid. That's kind of how we're going to think about it. And so once they did hybrids, they noticed some offspring were a lot more, um, a lot like showing up a lot more often than other ones. And that started them to think about like, huh, I wonder if something's going on here, if we can put numbers to this. So some important words that you're going to want to get to used to using is um, characters and traits. So a character is going to be some sort of general category. Eye color, hair color, height, weight, something like that. A trait is going to be like the specific version of that. So for eye color, it could be blue, brown, green, hazel, right? So the, the colors would be the traits. The character is just the category. All right. So... Segregation is going to be something that can happen, um, and basically what segregation is, is how you can end up with brothers and sisters that don't look exactly alike, right? And that's because you have all this mixing that's going to happen, um, like we talked about in meiosis. So um, Mendel is going to be the father of genetics, and he's going to be the one who kind of started to look at some patterns and say, huh, that's weird, I wonder why that's happening. Um, first one is that he noticed that a trait can all of a sudden disappear in one generation and then all of a sudden reappear. Um, he saw this with eye color, right? You could have a grandmother with blue eyes and then none of her kids have blue eyes, but then their kids' kids have blue eyes, right? So how does that happen? Um, and then segregation. Why, if you know everybody should be blending together, why do we have brothers and sisters that look so different from one another? Um, and then the third thing that he figured out is there were certain traits that were way more likely to be represented than their alternatives. So he started to put um, numbers to it, and he started to work with the garden pea plant. Um, so why did he use the garden pea? Well, one of them is that he um, had already seen some data from other scientists, so it's always nice to have extra data that you can compare to. Um, another one was there was a lot of true breeding varieties, and what that means is there was... Um, not a lot of like weird things that were happening. It was like they either had like purple flowers or white flowers. Um, they're easy to grow, they're small, and they have a fast generation time. So you could do a lot of rep repetitions. As we talked about in chapter one, you want to make sure that you have as many trials as you can. And another thing that's interesting is both male and female sexual organs are on it. So he could actually take the male organs off if he needed to, to um, allow them to not self-pollinate and those types of things. All right. So um, basically what he would do is he would let one um, variety just self-pollinate for a while so he can make sure he's working with true pure breeding traits. So what I mean by that is he had a purple flower. He would let that purple flower self-pollinate and make sure that no white flowered plants would come up. Um, so he would do that. Then he would do crosses, so he would purple, or he would purple, he would cross a purple flowering plant with a white flowering plant and see what would happen. Then when he had that hybrid offspring, he would let the hybrid offspring self-pollinate and he would see what happened, what would happen in their generations. All right, so he studied seven different characteristics, and I've got a picture of the characteristics that he used to study. Um, yeah. So he did flower color, which could be purple or white, flower position where it came off the sides or at the t tips of the plant, seed color, yellow or green, seed shape, round or wrinkled, 
um, whether the pod was inflated or constricted, whether the pod was green or yellow, and then whether they were tall or dwarf plants. So those were going to be the characteristics that he found. And in the next video, I'll talk about the F1 generation and what he did with all of that information.